good afternoon or good day, whenever you're evening, night time, whenever you're watching this. Uh, but I am giving this to you on Friday. It is the end of the week. And we have been talking about family. We've been talking about hope in Jesus. We've been looking at the first uh, letter that Peter wrote to the church in Rome, the predominantly Gentile church. And that there's this amazing truth that through Jesus, we've been grafted in, adopted in, taken into God's family. And that's why Peter addresses the predominantly Gentile church with the language of Israel, the language of the Old Testament. And that is our hope that we are in Jesus and it's eternal. And that's why whenever we face any kind of trial, difficulty, uh, suffering, we go through it with hope. And that hope raises us above our circumstance. Um, today, as we come to this passage, in still in the first chapter of Peter, 1 Peter, we, we need to bear in mind those two truths, that we are God's family, founded um, and secured in the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus. And that gives us hope that goes beyond our circumstances. It doesn't mean that we um, pretend things are easy or that we live some kind of life of denial or make believe. No, but it gives us a horizon. It gives us a, a thing on the horizon to fix our eyes upon, to help us through, to help us move forward, while at the same time giving us access to the Father and the Holy Spirit and the family of God that supports us and holds us up and loves us. So let's read this uh, verse together today. We're going to read from verse 13 onwards. It's in uh, the first chapter of 1 Peter. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, Set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each per person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was with, not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. And this, this is our first response to these amazing truths that we've just been talking about. Yes, Buster. Sorry, I've got Buster, my dog here. One translation of this passage starts with the phrase, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind. Look this up. This is a very visual representation of getting ready for the future, getting ready for whatever may come your way. Warriors used to wrap up their loincloth, which is like a skirt, and turn it into a pair of almost like running shorts. They were ready. And so that's what girding up the loins or your loins, girding up the loins of your mind looks like. This is about getting ready. This means that because of our family status in Jesus and because of the hope and confidence we have in him, and in his ultimate victory, that we are to get ready. And because of his love, we are to respond. And that means be like him. We are not ignorant anymore. We don't live the old way anymore. So we have to remember that his rescue and his securing us in family and with hope comes first. And this is how we respond. We know how precious the blood of Jesus is. We don't want to waste this blood of Jesus. It's so precious. We know what it took. When we look at what it took to, and what it cost Jesus, what it cost God, who knew this was going to happen before. He had been hatching his plan long before, getting it all in place. Well, then we live, a daily, we live in the daily acknowledgement of that, of how precious the blood of Jesus is. And therefore, we want to be obedient. We want to love Jesus back. There's a sense here that before we knew Jesus, you know, whatever we did, well, we did it because we felt like it. And some of these things may have been bad or evil even. But now, with this new status and this new knowledge, as a response, well, we aim to be holy. And so my encouragement today is for us to take on Peter's words, put them to our heart. Peter knew Jesus in person. He knew how much Jesus loves us. And he says, be holy because he is holy. 
And that's his way of girding up the loins of our minds. You see, the story of God's people has always been one of exodus, one of exile, God, one of rescue. God saves us. And then he moves us into a place where we are then meant to be his hands and his, his saving arms amongst the nations to bless people and love people. And then often trouble comes and often we maybe haven't been holy in that way. And so Peter's saying, come on, look how precious the blood of Jesus is. Gird up the loins of your minds. Be ready. And that is to be like Jesus. What does holy look like for you today? I mean, of course, things are going to spring to mind. What do you meditate upon? What do you put into your body? What are you watching? What are you thinking about? How do you spend your money? You know, is it beneficial for others? Even, is it even beneficial for yourself? <laughs> you know, are we looking to bless and to love the poor and the marginalised with what we think about and what we do and what we invest in? Because I think that actually is at the very heart of God. What about who we spend our time with? Are we pushing the boat out? And by that I mean, do we go out and get into the margins, the places where we are not comfortable, where we're maybe not represented? You know, with the salt of the earth. Are we looking for people that we feel comfortable with? Or are we looking to go in and make things better for others to bless and love the people around us? Do we look for people that have the same views and expressions as us? Or do we want to push into areas with people that maybe differ to ourselves? You see, holiness is not simply about some religious act or some abstinence act. Holiness is not trying to cut out behaviours that we, th we think are sinful. I mean, I know I've learned that sin is way deeper and broader than just my own individual actions. No, we see throughout scripture and throughout the prophets, calling people to holiness means having a heart for the poor, having a heart for the oppressed and not just praying for them, but doing something about it. Because holiness is about being like Christ. He was for the broken. He was for the lost. He was for those in severe need. So gird up the loins of your mind today. Be holy. Be like Jesus. Because you are family. We are family. That status, it was bought at a great, great price. That we have a hope in a future. And because of those things, we have a great, great opportunity to show the love of Jesus. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.